on guys welcome back to the channel critical overload here so this will be a review for from season three episodes five and six for those of you who've been watching my videos you know that i have just seen the first four episodes but now i've seen five and six so i'm going to be talking about five and six and set some expectations for you guys going into the rest of the episode since i know episode two is coming out on sunday and then every other episode will be out the following sunday so unfortunately Episode five and six definitely to me loses the momentum presented during the first four episodes. We're back to more filler and character drama over piecing the puzzle together, the bigger puzzle. That's not to say these are bad episodes. It's just two episodes in response to the upcoming wild fourth episode that gives us two newcomers to Fromville, a colony house resident dies and another character who debuted last season is left for dead. That is what you can expect to go down in episode four and episodes five and six are kind of slow down explorations of everyone's response to what happened in episode four, which is pretty wild. And I think will be some people's favorite of the season so far once it airs. Now, episode five and six, I can say are durable therapeutic additions to the season that allow us to get a feel of everyone's psyche while still delivering a few new revelations about what's going on connected to the characters that we've all come to know and love as well. The townspeople are growing frustrated after Tabitha is able to make contact with them. You'll see how she manages to do that. I'm not going to go into exactly how. Boyd is clued in on Fatima's concerning condition, which leads to a rather shocking revelation for Fatima and Ellis when it comes to their baby. Ethan is longing for the days of when his family first arrived because they used to be happier. Julian Elgin's friendship gets highlighted. Donna deals with the loss and a massive revelation is uncovered about Tabitha in connection with this town in AKA Frumville. I again have to say that the writing in these episodes is dedicated mostly to exploring everyone's response to Tabitha finding a way out Fatima's pregnancy their frustrations with not being able to find a way out and get home and the overall fallout from what happens during episode four. Luckily, the scenes don't feel completely unnecessary, except for Elgin and Julie a little bit. Our newcomer, who is named Acosta, starts off on the wrong foot with Boyd, and I can't wait to see how everyone reacts to that. There does seem to be a lot of potential for her, uh, Acosta, that is, but she definitely doesn't start off on the right foot when it comes to Boyd and everyone else in town when she makes her way to Fromville. So all in all, I think that these episodes are going to be some of my least favorites until I see the rest because I don't know what to expect for seven through 10. But so far episodes five through six are some of my least favorites. But if you're gonna compare it to the filler we got in season two, I could argue that this feels at least appropriate after you've already given us Four episodes that I think were doing a great job at balancing mystery, character drama, giving us answers, raising more questions, putting a spotlight on the overall bigger picture. I think that what goes down in episode five and six is acceptable for where it is centered or placed in the season. Again, those first four episodes, you heard my review. I praise those first four episodes. Five and six just feels like a pit stop, I hope. I hope this is not how the rest of the season is like, but this is definitely gonna be one of the more two episodes <laughs> that people I can see not preferring, probably getting a little bit frustrated at. And I know we're all as fans of the series at a point where we're just like, give us answers, give us answers, give us answers. You have to be mindful also that if they just gave us answers, they wouldn't be able to drag it out. The whole point of why it gets dragged out is because of the fact that it is a successful show. You have to be realistic when it comes to that. So some filler is warranted, but at the same time, I again just hope that this show does not end up in a position where you pile so many questions, you forget to answer certain things or certain answers don't make sense. I'd hate to see that. Now, when it comes to the performances in these two episodes, uh, Harold Perrineau still remains to be a standout amongst the cast. Uh, he, again, the way he delivers his lines the anger and the frustration Boyd has just instantly commands your attention. Everyone else around him is doing a good job too, but Harold Perrineau, every time he's on my screen and when he gets in his bag, I just can't help but look away or I can't help but not look away. I'm just glued to everything Boyd is saying, his mannerisms, the facial expressions, and 
that's why Boyd is one of the best characters in the show. A large part is because of the fact that you have this brilliant actor, Harold Perrineau, bringing him to life in such a tremendous way. So, pacing wise, even though this is more of the dragging your feet kind of episodes, pacing wise, I didn't think a lot of the scenes went on for far too long outside of, again, just Elgin and Julie's little friendship highlighting although there are some moments during those encounters that give us a plot device that is used at the end of the fifth or sixth episode no at the end of the sixth episode but pacing wise all in all none of these scenes feel like they go on for far too long everything f gets enough time to breathe there are some moments that are a bit tension based too although when it comes to the tension specifically a sequence at jim's house with ethan and the missing kids that Tabitha has been seen, that was kind of just here one second and com and completely over within the span of another second. It, it just I didn't like how they didn't let certain tension building moments breathe a little bit longer to really unnerve you and get under your skin. But they really do take their time, of course, like they did with season two. They let those episodes, they let those sequences of the characters talking and being emotional with one another. They just let those marinate and they hit home. They resonate with us as viewers because they are characters we're invested in. It's not like they're telling us to sit through these scenes with people we don't like. <laughs> but we all just want answers. I get that. But I just wanted to come out here and say I would temper your expectations when it comes to five and six. Five and six definitely feels like taking their foot off the gas pedal a little bit. And I want to see what else goes down in seven through ten before I change my rating around. Because for right now, I still am going to just say I give it a six point five out of ten. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notification, and never miss a video. In the description, I'll have links to my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.